begin by asking you, you described the United States attitude towards Iran as a pathological obsession and that it wanted to bring Iran to its knees. There are conflicting signals. What do you think the goal of President Trump's administration is? To bring you back to the negotiating table or to somehow resolve this with some military engagement? Well, if they wanted to negotiate, we were at the negotiating table. And they were at the negotiating table. Up until, I think, April of last year, uh, Mr. Brian Hook, who is now targeting Iran here and there, spoke to my deputy uh, in the JCPOA uh, Joint Commission in Vienna. So they decided to leave the negotiating table. We didn't leave the negotiating table. We are still at the negotiating table with the rest of P5 plus 1, which is now P4 plus 1 or E3 plus 2. So we're there. Uh, I think we hear conflicting signals. President Trump says one thing. Secretary Pompeo puts 12 conditions for Iranian for negotiations with Iran, which means surrender. Uh, and I think he should be dreaming. But he, but he, he has held out the hand. He said, you know, paid, uh, gave a compliment to President Rouhani, saying, I imagine he's a very interesting man that he would no, like. He didn't say interesting man. He's a lovely man. And lovely. <laughs> uh, the. Um, but I don't so know offered, at what time of the day new, he said he's, that, he's morning, new, afternoon. He's, um, he's offered a new set of... No, he didn't. You see, we negotiated not a two-page document and a photo op. We negotiated a 150-page document. Every detail is spelled out. I can assure you, as somebody who negotiated it, and you can ask John Kerry or any of the European foreign ministers who negotiated the deal, or Federica Mogherini or Cathy Ashton, nothing can be done that is better than this deal. It's not all we want, and certainly not all the United States want, but it is the best that could be achieved between six world powers plus EU and another country which is proud to stand on its own feet. Some of your colleagues have made it clear that uh, once America pulls out of the deal, it's going to be very hard to keep the deal alive because of the mounting economic pressure at home, which, as you know, is also creating more political pressure at home. How much longer can the deal survive? Well, uh, I, 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 I'm not a fortune teller, so I, I don't know. You said yourself that your patience is limited. It is limited because, uh, as I said in, in my statement, we derive our security from our people. So it is very important for us to keep the people satisfied with what we're doing. But they're not. Now, we're not. And it's not just because of sanctions, it's because no, it's, of it's primarily because, economic Yeah, yeah all of that, yes. all of that. We, we, we're not saying that we're a perfect uh, uh, country. Uh, we're better than most of your allies, but we, we are still uh, have a long way to go. But uh, what is happening in our region and what is happening in Iran requires a great deal of foresight, a great deal of strategic patience. And we are exercising that. It doesn't mean that we will have to do it forever. Whenever our people are dissatisfied, now the polls are at about 51%. We are just at the brink. 51% of the people believe that we still should be in JCPOA, while 80% of the people believe that we didn't get anything from it. And, and, this and, is and your hardline critics who've never trusted this deal, including, I would believe, the, your supreme leader, Ayahad Khamenei, the pressure is mounting on those who negotiated the deal to say, right, let's go back, let's start well, enriching. Yeah, there, is, there is pressure by a part of the population, but as I said, according to the latest poll by University of Maryland, at least, I mean, still 51% say we should stay in the deal. That may change. Situations may change. We believe it is in our interest, but we believe it is at the same time in the interest of Europe to stay in the deal. And that is why I believe Europe need, I mean, we appreciate that Europe has done a great deal politically. It has made all the right political statements. Some of them we don't agree with, but on, on JCPOA at least, at least we can agree on JCPOA. But it hasn't been prepared to make an investment. It hasn't been prepared to pay a price. But, they, but they, let they, me ask you a question mechanism. as Europe, mm. as Europe. If you allow the United States to make these demands, because the US is demanding Europe to violate international law. It's not demanding Europe to abide by international law, but it's demanding Europe to violate Security Council, and it's punishing Europe for implementing it. 
So this is an outrageous demand. If the United States were to come in the course of their fight with China and told Europe, stop dealing with China, what would you do? Well, Whatever you want to do then, do now in order to prevent that eventuality because a bully will get bullier if you succumb. Well, let's then let's look at this, look at the we'll put aside the JCPOA because there's a fundamental disagreement between the United States and Europe on it. But there are issues on which they have shared concerns. Let's look at ballistic missiles. We heard from the French foreign minister on Friday saying we are in a difficult dialogue with Iran, and if we do not see more progress, on France, as you know, has separated of uh, has has suggested a separate deal agreement on ballistic missiles. He said if we don't make progress. France will have to impose new sanctions. Well, let Does me have to address those concerns if it wants to make wider progress. Let me, let me ask you a question. I asked you one first. No, no, no. Yes. I'll answer your yes. question. Does Iran have to simply lie dead because some people don't want us to be able to defend ourselves? The UN the Security what? Council resolution oh, behind the Iran nuclear no, no. deal called on Iran not to develop ballistic missiles. No, no, no. So it we're talking about it. Didn't. it I, urged my my friend, I negotiated 2231, so yes. I know every word of it. It called upon Iran. It didn't demand Iran. It did not, Iran, yes. Not to develop, so it's something different, not to develop ballistic missiles that are designed to be capable Every word of it took months to negotiate, designed to be capable to carry nuclear weapons. We don't design any of our missiles to be capable to carry nuclear weapons because we don't have nuclear weapons. So none of the Security Council nonsense. The Europeans know it, the Russians know it, even the Americans know it. The Americans have testified before Congress when the deal was on that it's, it's not about missiles per se. It's about missiles designed to carry nuclear, to be capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Just what weapons. they're saying now is we, we, we negotiated six. forever. But let's, let's wait a second. Problem is, there are $100 billion of weapons going to Iran. Nobody is selling us a single fighter jet. Nobody. How are we supposed to defend ourselves? When we were attacked by French Exocet missiles, by German chemical weapons, by Russian uh, MiG fighters, by British tanks, by American AWOC surveillance, who came to our assistance? Why, were, when our people were being showered with missiles, with Iraqi missiles, nobody gave us a means of defense, either air defense or missiles to retaliate? No one. We had to beg. Now, I am not going for the pleasure of my, my friend, uh, Minister Lodrian, or anybody else to make our people defenseless so that the next Saddam Hussein in our region could rise up and kill our people without the means of our defense. We still, okay, have, okay. So we you, still have people who cannot breathe in Iran because of the chemical weapons that were provided to Iraq from Europe. Europe, I mean, if we, were, if we were to negotiate, if we were to negotiate about armaments, Europe has a lot to respond to. Europe is not going to be in the inquisition seat. Europe will be asked why it supported Saddam Hussein? Okay, Why we can't go back in history. Let's Yemen. not go back in so, history. We've got no, no, no. enough on the current. Uh, so, <laughs> let's ask this. So, the United States objected to your recent, has to be said, failed satellite launches, saying the technology used could be interchangeable with technology used in ballistic missiles. Then a the report argument it, about missiles is misplaced. So yes. but then satellite the, launches. The New York Times something. published a report saying that actually there's been a very long standing and an accelerated program to sabotage your development of ballistic missiles, providing providing faulty parts, etc. Iran is looking into this. Is there, do you think, now? We're investigating this, but I think more than Iran, the international community should be concerned, because last time the United States engaged in that operation, it resulted with Israel in the killing of six nuclear scientists. I think it is important for, for the international community to rise up and say that this is not jungle. We don't run the law of the jungle. Okay. That, that you interfere in the legitimate defense of another country. I ask you a question, does Iran have the right to defend itself? And if we have the right to defend ourselves, do we do it with swords? Do we do it with whatever, guns? Or do we need sophisticated means of defense? The most sophisticated means of warfare are being sold to our region, and President Trump conveniently calls them beautiful military equipment. 
Now, we're not getting any of those beautiful military equipment. The beautiful military equipment the Yemenis are getting. Mm. They're being killed with it. Okay. I don't think they call it beautiful. Let's, let's, okay, missiles is one issue. We, we don't have a lot of time. I just want to at least to touch on some of the issues that both Europe and the United States agree on. Last month, the European, but, uh, but well, last month, the Europeans... They're, they're, they're simply ch repeating the, the American claims. Why they agree on? I mean, this is... But they, they wouldn't mean, do it for the sake of doing well, it. They obviously me, have Tell me, concerns. any European should tell me, because, you know, this didn't come out of the blue. We had these discussions during the JCPOA, and we decided, because each one of us had something to say, we decided to set it aside. Okay, it's, not okay, that, it's not that somebody has all the right and somebody is, doing, is just doing mischief in our region. Okay, let's set that one for the side. Last okay, month, the good. European Union, this will be, it will be, unfortunately, be negotiating this for many months, if not years to come. The European Union imposed new sanctions on Iran last month. It put two Iranians on its, uh, its list, as well as an intelligence unit, after there were attacks in Denmark, in France, and the Netherlands. So the European leaders are saying, what is Iran doing it, trying to carry out assassinations on European soil? They also see this as part of a, of a kind of behavior that they want to stop. Well, They've imposed sanctions, so it's not simply well, just allegations. And the, uh, yeah. people have okay, been arrested I mean, in France. Sanctions based on allegations, mm. not, not sanctions based on facts. Let me, let me make a couple of comments, because this is very important, and I, I want mm. to really address this. First of all, the arrest of the person who is charged with uh, the Wilpan bombing happened on the day of arrival of our president in Europe after many months of preparation. Do you, think, do you think we're really crazy that we do this on the day? At least we do it the day before, the day after, 10 days after, wouldn't die. We do it on the day that our president comes here. I mean, give us some credit. Some accusations now, that perhaps see. it was a Hold rogue, a rogue operation within it must, Iranian it, agencies? It could be a false flag operation. It could have been an entrapment. It could have been a rogue operation. But it's certainly not the work of a government that you should call crazy if we did it. And you don't gain the influence that we have by being simply crazy. Now, let me address another issue. There are allegations. Now, the Netherlands made allegations. They kicked out two of my diplomats, my diplomats, career foreign ministry officials, and now their intelligence is saying that they had no evidence. No evidence. Now, we are the aggrieved party. Second point. What is clear is that there are people in Europe who have been on Europe's terrorism list up until 2012. What happened all of a sudden that they were withdrawn from the terrorism list? You see, I followed these issues for a long time. In 1984, let me take you back a bit in history. In 1984, it's an unfortunate date to use, but let's. Yeah. The United States removed. Saddam, not not no, too hold much on, history. Hold on. History the United States removed Saddam Hussein from its terrorism Listen. list and put Iran on terrorism list. The, again, in 1990, Saddam Hussein was put back on the terrorism list. So we cannot list. keep going back to Saddam Hussein. In, in 1998, Listen. Listen. the United States put MEK on the terrorism list. In 2012, they took it off the terrorism list. This is a game. This game needs to stop. A terrorist is a terrorist is a terrorist. Terrorists don't don't change. Rudy Giuliani yesterday spoke for, for, for the MEK. John Bolton has spoken for the MEK. John Bolton is angry because he promised the MEK that he would celebrate in 2019 in Iran with them. Does they are still in Paris. Do you think John Bolton represents what some say that a lot of the statements of President Trump's administration verge on regime, wanting regime change? Uh, I think the United States administration is not doing anything but regime change. Only okay. regime change. It wouldn't have withdrawn from JCPOA the way it withdrew from JCPOA had it not had the illusion that there would be regime change within a month. Let's look. Let's I mean, look. the United States, the, this administration is listening to wrong folks. These guys have been, uh, have had the illusion that Iran will evaporate for the past 40 years. And we are still here. Seven administrations have gone, okay. and we are still here. Let's and I think we will be here for a long time. You see, we had an empire. Okay, let's not go back to history. Okay, that let's keep more than the lives of countries.
<laughs> At this rate, we're going to be back to the seventh century. We don't have time for the seventh century right now, although we're very cognizant. Well, that's earlier oh, yes, than yes, seventh yes, century. Yes, okay. um, <laughs> that goes yes. seven thousand okay. years but ago. I'm going to I'm going to take the privilege of the chair and introduce at least a history of a year. Last year, when we all gathered here at the Munich Security Conference, you will remember, ladies and gentlemen that there was a real concern that the region was slipping towards war between Israel and Iran, a proxy war being carried out in Syria. Now, as we meet last month, there was another uh, series of um, is Israeli attacks on what they said was your weapons depot, training bases, hitting Damascus International Airport, which angered the Russians and the Syrians, and Iran fired back. Is the risk of war, of, of, of real confrontation, even greater than it is, greater this year than when we met last year? Well, certainly some people are looking for war. We are Who in Syria. Looking? Who is looking? Israel. We are in Syria on the invitation of the Syrian government for the sole purpose of fighting terrorism. No other, no other reason for our being there. I think last I checked international law, violating Lebanon's airspace and shooting into Syria is a violation of international law. And the, and in, in the international community and of all people in Europe, which believes international law is the foundations of international order, is blaming us and not blaming the Israelis for violating international law. So let's wake up. So the risk is great. Is risk great. is great, but risk will be even greater if you continue to turn a blind eye to severe violations of international law. These are violations of international law. Let's say we live in a jungle and let's allow everybody. So let's not talk about human rights let, let's, because okay, Khashoggi, that's, that's... Khashoggi put human rights uh, in the shelves. I mean, anybody who claims human rights, just remind them of Khashoggi and I'll tell you, okay. it's, it's gone. Keeps... Let's not talk about international law because Israeli behavior is putting international law on the shelves. U.S. behavior is putting international law on the shelves. Let's just rid ourselves of all these uh, non-essential non restraints, uh, according to the United States, because John Bolton once said when he was my colleague in the United Nations, that international law is a tool in our toolbox. Okay. We use it whenever we like it to. Okay, so it's, not, it's not a tool in the toolbox. It, it's either the foundations of international relations or nothing. Okay, I'm glad you put human rights in the agenda because we've all agreed here at the Munich Security Conference that we do have to pay greater attention to human security. You mentioned human rights. The Europeans are also saying to you, what about eight environmentalists who've been in prison for the last year? The Persian Wildlife Heritage Foundation. And I know the Europeans are saying we cannot we cannot finance environmental projects in Iran if environmentalists are going to jail. Even Iranian officials have said there is nothing against them. Can you assure people here that there will be justice in this case and uh, many others? Uh, hold on. As I said, I think concern for human rights after Not Khashoggi. Not just concern, but after, action. After Khashoggi. Let's leave that to the side. Why should I? When the Saudis why, are in the chair, I'll ask I? the Saudis. You are still selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. Why should I set aside Khashoggi? Tell me about Hold eight environment. No, Hold no, no, down. we don't have Okay, to I'll talk about the environment. But, but let, us, let us put this charade away, this hypocrisy away. Your Excellency, we, are, we, we all here, all of us have condemned the terrible crime of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. What happened? And may it be... What happened that... afterwards? What happened afterwards? Same type of relations, no okay. stop in environmental okay. support right. for Saudi Arabia. Your point Arabia, is taken. No the point is taken. Okay, but good. Let us focus now, on. now let's... Your let, partners when you here walk down, want to know about your human let's rights walk record. Down. Okay, let's walk down together. Yes. Let's not take the high moral ground because we, you certainly don't have it. Let's walk down together. We in the government don't control the judiciary. We have our complaints this about... This is what you always hold on, say, yes. Hold on. We have you have an our, elected president who promised Iranians better freedoms, yeah. more freedoms, including human rights. And you see, when I said we rely on our people for our security, we don't get support from outside. We don't have a Senator Lindsey Graham saying that we would be speaking Arabic if they didn't support us for one week. We, we rely on these people. So respecting their rights, respecting their freedoms is not just a moral obligation for us, it's a national security requirement for us. Without them, we are nothing. Can we see? Without yes, our people, yes. we are nothing. We have excesses. We have areas where I don't disagree with, I don't agree with, the government doesn't agree with. We have an independent judiciary. The president doesn't have any power over the judiciary. We're doing all, all what we can. They say, as the judiciary, and I have no way of 
testing the validity of their claim that these people were charged with certain types of crime. It is for a court of law to decide. I am not that because court. It's, it's I, can call, I time. can call for humanitarian uh, behavior with them, for uh, clemency, for all, all of that, and we've been doing that. But it's not our job. Because it's one hurting you at a time when you would like greater investment to try to keep the Iran nuclear deal alive. You have the British Foreign Secretary taking the, un, the really unprecedented step is telling dual nationals, those holding Iranian and British passports, it could be another passport, don't go to Iran because it's too risky. More than 30 dual nationals are in prison. No, no That not doesn't 30. help you, for, you see, and it doesn't have, help Iran nor have, those people in prison. We have hundreds of thousands of dual nationals who come to Iran every year. How many of them, rightly or wrongly, yes, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with, yes. with that, rightly right. or wrongly are, are in jail. I mean, there are more Iranian single nationals in jail. So should every Iranian leave the country? I'm so, sorry. Okay. But, you, but, the, the, but it's part of a package, isn't it? When it comes to Iran's engagement with the international community. We appreciate Iran has its grievances, but Iran also has its own responsibilities to, 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 to keep. See, our responsibility to our citizens is something, and we have mistakes, shortcomings, excesses that we need to address. But it's not for Europe. As I said, did you stop your dealings? Did your businesses stop going to Saudi Arabia to invest? So don't tell me that your businesses are not coming to Iran because you're concerned about human rights. Did they stop going to Iran? I mean, the coffers were too big, maybe. They didn't stop. So, I mean, let's, let's be honest with each other. I'm a human rights professor. I have taught human rights for over 30 years. So I have concerns about human rights. I believe human rights need to be respected. I believe human rights for us is a security requirement, not a moral nicety. It's a security requirement. But I believe Europe, and certainly the United States, are not in a position. I remember at times Saddam Hussein was We're voting talking, in but, favor but, of resolutions against Saddam Iran. Saddam Hussein, rest in peace. But we Saudi Arabia peace. today, yes, yes. Saudi <laughs> Arabia <laughs> today in the United yes. Nations was one of the major supporters of the human rights resolution against Iran. Is this the human rights the international community wants to uphold? We know that this still resonates in Iran, that history still has a very strong, strong presence in Iran. And we, we thank you. Your point is well taken that you, you mention it. No, I'm talking, yeah, about, yes, I'm talking yes. about last month. I'm right. not talking okay. about history. Okay. One last comment from you, sir, as we bring our conversation to a close, <laughs> our friendly conversation to a close. It is as friendly. We've been friends for 30 some years. Um, <laughs> Your Excellency, when you've had many meetings here, and as you prepare to leave Munich this year, you've had many conversations with your allies, you've heard many statements, are you leaving more worried about the future of the Iran nuclear deal and your position in the region, or are you more reassured that there can be a way forward? If we derived our security from here, we I would have been more worried. But since we derive our security from our people, I'm not at all worried. Your Excellency, the, the Foreign Minister of the Islamic Republic of Europe, there are many more questions, and I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, you have many more. But please join me in thanking His Excellency, Ahmed Jawad Zardi. Thank you.